On the 18th of July, news magazine In These Times published an article reporting on the development of an herbicide-resistant corn seed known as HT4. Bayer AG, one of the world's leading pharmaceutical companies, designed the new genetically engineered corn seed to provide farmers with the power to kill weeds without the five different herbicides. Herbicide resistance is the development of plants so that they become tolerant to chemicals, rendering them ineffective. This is especially bad once weeds develop resistance and multiply to destroy the rest of the crops. This is a problem for farmers and agriculturalists. How do you treat weeds without infecting the crops that you want? Well, one solution is to genetically modify your crops. By making your wanted crops resistant to herbicides, you're free to combat weeds without stunting your crops. How does a weed become resistant to a herbicide? There are three different ways. Pre-existing resistance, where the plant's genes can already withstand the herbicide. Importation of resistance, where resistant genes are introduced through contaminants like in fodder. And natural dispersal, where through seeds and spores, genetic plant resistance can spread over a great distance. Over the past 50 years, herbicide resistance has proved to become a significant issue for agriculture in the US. Since the 1990s, when genetically modified crops were introduced to the world, weeds have continued to develop resistance to herbicides, leading to farmers and producers encountering problems with the removal of weeds. Agriculturalists have been struggling against weeds ever since they started trying to fight them. As technologies evolved, so have the plants. And now the weeds are outpacing us at an alarming rate for something that just sticks in one place and cannot move. Herbicides work by targeting a specific mechanism in a plant and disrupting it. For the past 30 years, weeds have largely started to develop resistance at the target site, shifting the way they grow and no longer allowing herbicides to bind to the plant. As plants, like weeds, breed, natural selection comes into play. The plants that can withstand the chemicals and pesticide outlive the rest and have a better chance of being able to reproduce and spread. At a genetic level, what Bayer is doing is editing the instructions in the corn's genomes that make it develop resistance to five common herbicides. Resistance to all of these gives farmers more choice in what they use to fend off weeds. In a process without the luck of selective breeding, genetic modification is precise. This allows scientists to take the beneficial DNA of plants with desired traits and incorporate them into mass production. The genes are collected, then shot through a metal tube in a dense bullet to inject into the plant. However, HT4 is just a short-term fix to slow the impact of the herbicide treadmill, the name given to the race against weed resistance. It's getting to the point where some weeds are already showing to resist strands of dicamba. It's only a matter of time before HT4 becomes obsolete, and a new or more potent herbicide must be developed. Corn is the most bountiful crop grown in the United States, making up about 92 million acres of farmland, an area about the size of Minnesota or Michigan. Now, take all that corn and every other GMO food, like soy and rice, and remove it from the shelves. You have effectively starved an entire nation. Humans, believe it or not, need food to survive. Without food, they will die. While the idea of preventing mass starvation and deaths will help everybody, farmers will be the most advantaged by this discovery, as it gives their crops a fighting chance against pestilence. This will lead to better survival in the market and improve sales. And really, farmers are the main combatants of world hunger. Without these newer developments, we'll be launched into a global crisis. The economics and competition of the food and farming industry play a heavy role in this as well. Thanks to Bayer's purchase of Monsanto, essentially developing a monopoly in the agricultural market, they could be well on track to having unwavering power over the US's food output. Not fantastic? There is no evidence suggesting that GMOs are any more harmful than regular foods. However, some groups remain stood against them, claiming that GMOs are just an excuse to develop more toxic herbicides. Some have even claimed that they have developed allergies to GMOs. All the stigma around GMO use also stems from the ethics of meddling with the course of nature. If we can edit the material of plants, why stop there? Why not extend the genetic modification to animals or humans? Even then, 
who's to stop someone from radically manufacturing a single superior race and causing the end of humanity? <clears throat> this widely evolving topic leaves us with a few questions still. What happens when reeds grow resistant to this new wave of weed resistance? Would it be possible to edit more genomes and to make the corn more resistant to diseases and other pollution? Could we even extend this technology to other plant species, or humans? Though we're still working to fix this issue completely, it may be worth keeping an ear out for updates. Get it? Ear? Corn? I get it. It's just corny. Corny! No, please just stop recording.